How do economists measure the cost of the Ebola crisis? It's not so easy. So who better than to ask than how they do it than Wall Street Journal columnist Michael Casey, who has been investigating this. Thank you. For, you, you are the, the right guy to investigate well, this. I've, I've got no connection to Ebola, so that doesn't but you make do, me the you right do guy. But you yeah. do understand how economists work, and this, this is a, 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 tricky, a tricky thing to, to measure. So wh where do they start with this? Because measuring well, the, the economy alone is hard, right. and they're measuring a cost well, look, of the, the, the thing is, I suppose, you just, like everything in, history, in, in economics, you use history. So hi, hi, historical records give you a chance to look at past events like this. The key two events that we've had in the past decade were the SARS and the avian flu outbreak. There was also, of course, the swine flu outbreak in, uh, out of Mexico. And those showed us something. Now, this is a very different diseases to Ebola, the key point being that uh, the flu is of course airborne, uh, which means it spreads in a very different way as a disease. But what, what they learned from the SARS outbreak in particular was that the economic impact was far greater from measures taken both by individuals and governments to mitigate the perceived risk than the actual cost of, of managing the disease. So, 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 it so we're really managing fear is what you're trying so to, trying it isn't, to measure. So it isn't the hospital costs that were the, the main cost then? It wasn't the sort it's of... It's travel bans, it's school closures, it's, uh, it, it's, it's t steps taken by individuals not to go to restaurants, for example. All of that in the case of Hong Kong in particular, which was heavily affected by the SARS outbreak, it was the major, like 80 to 90 percent of the economic costs come down to what you could say is the fear factor. And, and Hong Kong is a particularly dense uh, place, right. I mean, d d very dense population, one of the densest populations in, in, the, in, the, in the world there. Mm -hmm. So you could understand why people didn't want to go out and stuff, but that could also be really impacting the US and right. other economies that really need. Well, um, well we're already of... seeing it in Africa, right? So we know, of course, that there are three countries where Ebola is highly concentrated, that's Sierra Leone, Guinea, and, and Liberia. There's been m small cases, good news out of Nigeria today, of course, they were declared uh, Ebola free. They've got because their they have cases no cases in a, a no a live lot of cases, yeah. no, no contagious cases. Now that's a very good sign. Gambia, for example, has zero cases, has not had one single case, but it's had 65% drop in hotel occupancy because all the bird watchers and others that come to that country for tourism are now cancelling trips. And so you're seeing all of this economic contagion, even when you don't have the epidemi epidemiological. I didn't get that word well, right, did I? Epidemiological uh, data <laughs> is what, what we're, we're talking about, and it is is what. What um, a president said once, it, we have nothing to fear but fear itself, and maybe that is the more case. More or less what it is, yes. Okay, great stuff, great column, a lot more in it than that. Um, thank you very much. Thanks, Michael so. Casey of right. the Wall Street Journal.